Hello, everyone. Uh, people are starting to uh, get with us. Uh, I'm with you. I'm uh, Nancy Fanous. Uh, maybe um, most of you have definitely we have met before. Uh, I would like to welcome you today with us in our first webinar from uh, Cairo Training Center uh, of uh, World Gastroenterology Organization. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you, of course, my dear friends. Um, of course, um, during this difficult time, um, many things are not available, but at least we can see each other through uh, recent technology. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad I welcome you all with us. And uh, I, I also uh, would like to thank Professor uh, Brahim Mustafa for thinking of this brilliant idea of gathering us all together uh, in order to uh, just support each other in this difficult time uh, to see each other because definitely we miss you and do miss us and to uh, help each other to spread some uh, knowledge uh, and a better understanding of the situation and how to deal with uh, our practice uh, in, a, a, uh, in a right way in order to protect ourselves and in order to protect our beloved ones and to protect our patients. Um, this will be a one uh, in a series of webinars that we are planning to do from Cairo Training Center in order to keep in contact with you uh, until we can meet you again soon in Cairo uh, or in your countries. Uh, dear uh, friends and dear colleagues, thank you very much. I would leave you now with Professor Ibrahim Mustafa to start his uh, lecture about uh, our GI and hepatology practice in the uh, COVID era and uh, how can we manage different disease scenarios uh, now. Professor Ibrahim. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nancy, uh, for very nice introductions. All of you know about Cairo uh, Training Center. Cairo Training Center, it is starting in 2004 uh, by a group of doctors from over Africa. And now we are more than uh, 15 years working in Africa, either working in Cairo or uh, visiting other uh, country in Africa. We have many friends up to 250 or 300. We try, uh, me and Nancy, to send you an email. Uh, the idea of this contact is not mainly scientific. The idea of this contact is to be near with each other. We are friends. Uh, we get a very good friendship between me and the team, Nancy, and all the team which is training you as a new country. Some of you become very eminent doctors. Some of you um, become head of the unit. Uh, so uh, what we try to do is to get nearer to you. Uh, so that, how to get nearer? It's either to speak with you uh, like a friendly speaking or to give you some lectures, basic lectures. And by this means we can be connected. Maybe the number, we send the hundreds of emails uh, and I know that everyone may be busy and today is Saturday. But I think if you reach, uh, say, uh, at the end of the lectures, around uh, uh, 70 to 100, it will be good for the first times. But I hope that every time we gather each other, uh, maybe one per month to speak about one lectures, maybe to give some uh, video film about some technology in endoscopy, about some techniques like ERCB, like bandings, like... Uh, uh, colonoscopy, so we can discuss with each other. It will take uh, one hour uh, during every one month so we can be connected. Because now connection in the era of COVID-19, we need it. I am sure that we are planning to do two work training uh, with me and uh, coordinated also with Nancy. Your uh, Nancy is a very nice friend of all of you. And uh, behind there are many people working with us in this webinar, uh, especially uh, May. Many of you know May. That's uh, uh, May, it is uh, the host of this one. Also, you know Mustafa, and you will know another people from that. So 
uh, what I try to get with you, it is uh, to give you some information. I will start soon. Now we are reaching about 50. I hope that we can reach about 70 to 100 in the lectures. But I know the problem that of difference of hours, also maybe Ramadan in some area, uh, which is the people still uh, uh, eating after fasting all the days. Uh, maybe you send an email, what is the best time? It's either uh, midday or either you make it in uh, Friday or Saturday. I ask Nancy to, to give you questionnaires like survey, what's the best time? But she uh, convinced me that for the first time we said Saturday at 8 o'clock. And then by your reply on that, we will see what is the best time to get in contact. This is the mean of, of communication. We give, will give you some things and then say something. We need from you question to get from you something also. But the most important thing to see each other. You see me, you see Nancy, we see you, we conduct with you all over the world. So now I will start my lecture by uh, sharing the screens of my lectures. Uh, so, uh, gastroenterology and the hepatology practical in COVID-19 era. We'll speak about viral effect on GIT and how to manage GIT problems, our scenario on that. This is the first webinar transmitted from Cairo Training Center, which is a WGO training center by me, cooperating with uh, uh, um, Egypt Gastrohip organizing team, which is uh, May, and with my coordinator, Dr. Nancy. There are many references here. You will see that all the references, you will see that many of them. Uh, you can take any of this lecture to look for the uh, all the material. So all the material which I will give is coming not from me, but from many, many of uh, lectures like that. You should remember that COVID-19 is a new infectious disease. It's a global understanding is continuously living and involving. According to the study done in, uh, in China, sorry, uh, uh, that 2,000 patients, the awareness of doctors about GIT symptoms is 30%. So there is a missing uh, uh, information in this era about uh, COVID-19. Okay? You should know that COVID-19 is manifested by pneumonia, but it can get also digestive symptoms. What will you speak on digestive symptoms? Will you speak about is this fecal oral transmission? management of GIT symptom related to COVID-19, adverse reaction of therapeutic drugs, nutritional support, IBD in COVID-19 pandemic, infection control of digestive endoscopy during COVID-19, which in my opinion, one of the most important part of the lectures. Peak oral transmission, there's some group of patients with mild disease market present of digestive system and maybe are in the industries. The area may be the initial presentations of COVID-19 and maybe only later or never present to the respiratory system or fever. Experience delayed diagnosis compared to the patient with the respiratory system. This is normal because the patient complaining of GIT symptoms before. It may reflect higher viral load. The data with digestive symptoms of COVID-19 should be suspected of illness. So if you have patients with digestive symptoms with a possible COVID-19 contact, have a contact with the patient with COVID-19 and they have the GIT symptom in the absence of cough, short of breath, sore throat or fever, you should suspect if the patient is COVID-19 infections. This thing of this tool can be done. 
you know that the digestive systems are likely why because the target uh, cells in the in the virus is angiotensin converting enzyme two, and the angiotensin converting enzyme two receptor are found in upper and lower GIT tract and expressed nearly 100 fold higher than the respiratory system. Viral nucleic acid detected in the feces of over half of the patient infected of COVID-19 and one quarter of the cases of stool sample are positive when the respiratory sample are negative. So you should understand that. You should understand that the angiotensin converting to, which is a molecular target for this virus, infection can happen 100% in the lung, 20% in the heart, 30% in the gut, 40 in the, in the liver, and 20 in the kidney. So all this organ can be affected because it's containing angiotensin converting enzymes. Attention should be paid to the fecal containing contaminating environment, either by contact or aerosolar transmission. Protection from fecal contamination should be provided to the medical staff. This is a very important message today. How medical staff do, you should have a knowledge should improve your triage and the consulting protocol, should pay attention when you're screening the patients with COVID-19. What are the manifestations of, uh, of COVID-19 uh, COVID digestive system? You can get poor appetite, you can get nausea, you can get diarrhea, you can get abnormal liver enzyme, you can get loss of smell, vomiting, and all this can happen. The percentage is between 30 uh, uh, to 15 percent, and maybe uh, abdominal pain in 2 percent. And the gastrointestinal bleeding is very rare, but it can happen in 4 percent. This is all the digestive symptoms which result in during COVID 19. When COVID 19 related diarrhea diagnosed or suspected, it should be always distinguished from. So if you have a diarrhea, and you remember it may be a coven, you should remember drug induced diarrhea can be used for antiviral drugs, which you use it to treatment and the other comorbid conditions. Nutrition. Nutrition is very important because to give energy supply to the patients, started by intravenous or parenteral nutrition, but you should encourage very quickly oral nutrition as soon as possible because it should be very good for the patients. This is a special situation, and many of you may be in your country have an IPT patients, which is uh, in this era of uh, COVID-19. You should relax it in this era and taking coffee. Uh, no data about the incidence until of uh, IBD in patients. However, patients with IBD are an immunosuppressive agent or biological might be immunocompromised and you follow all the relevant guidelines to minimize exposure to the virus. Patient awareness is very important. IBD patients on steroid immunosuppression or biological are strongly recommended to avoid unnecessary travel and mass gathering. Patient with IBD Immunosuppression agent of Rajkar might be immunocompromised. This is a survey which is called the SCURE survey and the surveillance epidemiology of coronavirus under research exclusion. Until now, which is and said to me this slide now, I have until March, but now until 30 of 34, since two days, there are 875 77 cases of COVID-19 and IBD patients reported globally to the data. So until yesterday, there are eight, around maybe 900 cases of IBD with virus infections. During the active phase of IBD, patient may show symptom like fever, diarrhea. Patient with IBD, when you are flur or active, you have a symptoms and maybe overlap with the symptoms of uh, virus infections. 
What is the management strategy? What the management for patient with active IBD and IBD in remissions? What's the safety of medication and endoscopy? Dealing with IBD infected with the, the virus. Physician and nurses should be considered the access of health care for IBD patients during this special prevention period and should provide adequate patient education, different platform, telephones, online, social media, knowledge on IBD and prevention. So by this mean using that, we give him two information. Information about IBD, what you will do, and about the virus. And this is very important for this patient. They are panic. So how to uh, uh, recognize IBD unit? If you have a unit of IBD, what you do? First, for this patient who are regularly monitoring, virtual clinic online should be done and should be scheduled at the same time of a scheduled basis. And those couple of procedures should be limited to situation where the patient is suffering from moderate or severe symptoms. Regular endoscopic follow-up and the screening should be postponed. Strict high hygienic condition for endoscopic procedure must be implemented. If you have a new country randomized study, please deliver the study drugs to the patient at their home, either orally or subcutaneously, and not come to the hospitals. In case of urgency on IBD, patient with fever or without, how to proceed? If you, the patient should be close contact with the referral IBD center is important. To give him the right indication and the right times, including when to come to the hospital. If the patient is living far away, if the patient is in Kenya or in Ethiopia and is living far away, please contact with other IBD team, which is nearer to you, and ask the patient to go to them instead of traveling for a long period. The same concept may be applied in case of IBD flaring or complications. What's mean by that? I mean, if you have a patient with IBD and you are in any country in, your, in, in, in Africa, you are in the town, many of you are in the center of town. So if I have a problem, give him all idea, all the indications. If he cannot, please refer him to the center in another area near him and discuss with him. This is during any infections or during flaring. If you have a symptomatic patient more than one year, we delay on fusions IV <coughs> or not, because IV it should be come to the hospitals to take IV. Yes, if you have an animal with normal carprotectin or other biomarker, you can, you can postpone infliximab to <coughs> 10 weeks and map can to four to eight weeks. So we can postpone that. Another question was asking, can I shift from IV biological to subcutaneous? Switching to subcutaneous drugs should be limited in a center where infusion are no more available. A different approach when you, to whom we start a new biological, in this case, please start by subcutaneous one so the patient can take it at home. So this is, this is also uh, uh, very important in IBD patients. It's a special conditions. If patients uh, under immunosuppression had received an instruction to stay isolated, suspected in other infections, what to ask him? Said to him to stop cyberin in case of suspected infections. The benefit and harm from carefully waited before using corticosteroids. The mechanism of mesotrexate can increase over severe course, but postpone the injection is advisable. Biological should, biological should be postponed until resolution of the infection of the COVID-19 virus. And take care, temporary stopping of immunosuppression therapy should not have any impact of risk of IBD failure. So you will stop it, that these drugs slowly uh, stop until the dilution of infections, and this is what will not add in flaring of the infections. In patients with active IBD, and their IBD medication should avoid to initiate at that point. If IBD flare, 
you should promote to treat to avoid hospitalization. What's mean by that? If I have an IBD patient and his flare, try to give a good hospital, a good treatment, and to increase his dose or to shift to another line to prevent him to come to the hospital because he will get infection and he may need to go to uh, surgery. All drugs indicated for treat IBD flesh can be used at this stage. But adding cyprine or steroid to steroid or to monoclonal antibodies should be used cautiously because this reduction of CD4 T cells and delay virus clearance. So that, that, that what we do if you have a patient which is flare to avoid what to do. Biological in, in elderly. Elderly patients which is, is, is speak that COVID-19 uh, and this virus is affected mainly. We cannot drink during normal lecture, but we can drink during this very nice webinar with my friends. Uh, or IBD patients with comorbid conditions, because it said patient with elderly or comorbid condition shall differentiate these people from another people who should continue to treat IBD patients similarly to what to do in the pre uh, 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 COVID area, should treatment. For elderly patients, try to use monotherapy strategy and limit use of immunomodulations. Keeping elderly patients out of flare. So the elderly patient keeping them out of flare because by flare, by flare, these patients will go to the hospital. So we will have two beneficial effect of that. The most important one, prevent the patient from coming to the hospital where the risk of COVID-19 infection is amplified. So this is for elderly patients or patients with comorbid conditions. We speak about cure, which is uh, 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 collecting data. When we have the data before in March, now we said the data we have uh, around 900. Before there are 440 uh, in, in March. At that time, there are 10 patients hospitalized from 40 cases at that time in March, and two cases died. One in 82 years, male from Europe with cardiovascular asthma disease, and another young man was 25 years was on mesothelamine for multigram and infliximab. So, so only uh, this, this has happened in March 23. Now it's 40 cases, now it's nine cases, but I don't know how many patients uh, died from uh, uh, this IBD patient. But this is a study and since less than one month. This is very important. Maybe me and you, maybe your nurse has an IBD. So healthcare professional with IBD. So this is very important because IBD, it's a disease. It can happen to anyone, but can happen. Some doctor, I know them, they have an IBD under remissions. Some nurses have an IBD under remission. So it's not the rare that IBD patient be involved in hair care surgery. It should be referred to avoid flare during this time. So this their treatment should not be modified, should not change their treatment, should not decrease any drugs, should not uh, uh, decrease either using monosazocyprine or muran or monotherapy. Don't decrease these things. If they are completely normal, take it like that. At work, said to them they should have a personal protective equipment, which is very important to the, all the health care uh, workers like other people. There is some local authority that he changed the position of these patients from dealing of the patient to another area, like clinical area or any duty, which less exposure to patient who is confirmed or suspected. So you can shift your work, if you are a doctor or a nurse, from area to another area to avoid contact with patients. This is maybe very important for all of you, but all of you are endoscopists, all of you are friends, all of you come to Egypt. So about endoscopy, it's a nice uh, paper which we get it. It's COVID-19 pandemic through the lens of gastroenterologists looking for the silver lining. 
I don't know before what's mean the past server lining, but it's a paper. The hopeful side of the situation might be seen globally on the surface. Every cloud has a server lining, mean even that the worst event of situation have a positive aspect. So we should look for the positive aspect. So I like all of you, we can still ensure our success and becoming well-trained gastroenterologists by working together, taking advantage of a unique opportunity, formulating novel solution to new problem, being innovative, always looking for the silver lining, always looking for the positive aspect of what we have now, either in Europe or in Egypt, but I speak to my friends, my family in Africa. What's the challenging of medical stuff in this time? Effect on your personal life. I know that. Family and social life. I don't know the situations. Maybe in another webinar, we'll ask you to give every one of you about your situations of coronavirus. But here in Egypt, we are staying at home. We, we, we prefer to get out. Before it was six. Now it become nine o'clock. After nine, we cannot go out. So now we are staying at home nearly all the day. We, we decrease our work too much everywhere. So we have an effect of your professional life. I don't know the situations also in other African countries. I know the situation in Sudan because I have some contact with me, doctor there, but I don't know. But it had an effect in work environment, in education. So we try to make education in Congress. You should be with us in this month, uh, June. We have a, 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 a meeting should be done at the end of May, June, but we stop it uh, because we cannot do it. We try to make it in October. Uh, we will see. Finance. Many of you who's working in, in a private, like us, is still at, at home. So it's effect on, on, on many things. <clears throat> this is a sign which can still present a united, united front of fighting a pandemic. But please, while it's the same time, we should maintain moral for that. And this is my mainly message uh, to all of you. You should maintain your, your, your moral on that. Uh, uh, second, second things, I look for the email for all WhatsApps coming. What a life. Yes. Give me some minute to look because we are now in. So, as I see, this is normal. It's not a normal uh, lectures. Okay. So this is a mission coming for all the people that they are with us, which is very good. So this is what I need uh, because maybe your question is, it's how are you fine? What's your situation? I, I would suspect to ask you at the end what I like to give. Everyone give this idea about coronavirus in this country or what. You would say that at the end. There is a clear and urgent need to plan for endoscopy activity in your country. In the next weeks or next, I don't know the situation in every place, but here in Egypt we plan for that. It's very difficult to challenge time and decide what is the best for the patients. What's the best for population at large? What's the best for the healthcare staff? Be aware, this advice may change rapidly because the, the virus and the condition is changing very rapidly also. And we will be updated you, it's rapidly, especially the further national update and the advice. So every day you have new things. Yesterday you have a new drugs from Gilead. Before we had hydroxychloroquine. Before that we have erythromycin, we, we have plasma infusion, we have the spreading, we have fatality. So the still the condition is not clear about everything. So maybe next month we have lectures by another situation at all. What you should do, situation continue to overlap rapidly. And this advice may change from day to day. Now, so clinician and management. So any management or clinician, I think many of you in Ethiopia and Kenya and Uganda are a management of the unit now. Please restrict your number of staff in the rooms. Please limiting advanced endoscopy cases to small number of special consultants. 
So if he has a special case of difficult poly or difficult ERCV, give it to the special one, which is perfect, he can finish it. No time for training now. Assist stock of consumable and advice daily without getting funny. Consider any diagnostic testing like cal protector, radiology, telephone triage, something like that to prevent people to come to you. You see me drink water and then see what you do. Decisions making endoscopy. Need, what the endoscopy need to continue? Please listen to that very carefully. Uh, uh, what is you should stop? What you need discussions? Very quickly, you need to continue upper GIT bleeding with very obstructions, acute cholangitis, uh, endoscopic therapy uh, for perforations, symptomatic biliary disease. You should patient with time sensitivity, like um, uh, uh, evaluation of treatment of pre-malignant conditions, nutrition support, variation of GIT obstruction stenting, cases, special cases with IBD, you want to treat the disease because of flaring. What you should don't, all routine system, you should stop, all bland poem or pneumatic dilatation stop, elective intervention like structure Dilatation, ABC for gave, radio frequency, pneumatic ambulectomy, bariatric endoscopy should stop. No risk of follow up with vaginal healing, gastric healing, bore view, check post therapy, ambulectomy, or polypectomy. Any study for surgeons like polyp IBD parrots should stop. Routine non urgent small bowel, EOS for benign lesions, very dilatations, possible stone, some mucosal lesion, pancreatic cyst. Other ERCB, stone without resistant with no, no cholangitis, therapy for chronic pancreatitis, metal stent removal, vision under endoscopy, motility procedures, screening, colonoscopy, screening for upper GD malignancy, uh, evaluation of non urgent symptoms or disease, or procedure can be need any intimate result, so we can postpone for weeks. This is another thing which is outside of my lecture. Many people send about how many this is in Kenya, how many this is in the uh, United States, how many this is in many places. Please avoid sending all this uh, drastic uh, message because some people are mental, not mental like you, and you can make depression to many people. Our endoscopy should be regarded as a solar generating procedure and should provide appropriate mask and protective equipment. Nearly all experts recommend that healthcare worker wear N95 mask or equivalent to perform a solar generating procedure. This is a new thing, a solar generating procedure. Your endoscopy now putting as the first line of to get infection from the Ebola virus. And many, many patients are carriers, so you don't know they are not carrier, but have no symptom, but they have no symptom. So now endoscopy, it's one of the main things to spread infection because it is, you are very near from the patient and it can be called a, a solar generating procedure, AGP. Classifications of risk. There's low risk patients, which is intermediate risk and high risk. What is the low risk patient? No symptoms? No symptoms. No contact with anyone with COVID-2 positive matter. None staying in the risk area during the previous 15 days. Intermediate risk. Present of symptoms, but no contact with patients with positive virus, no stay in high risk area. L has no symptoms, but has a history of contact with someone or staying in during the previous 14 days is the intermittent. What is the high risk? I have one symptoms, fever, cough, presence, diarrhea, and has contact with someone was positive or staying in a high risk area during the previous uh, two weeks. So this is slide is very important. Low risk here, you should have surgical mask, hairnet, goggle, and single use gown and the gloves. Intermediate risk is two branch. 
Our endoscopy should consider as a high risk procedure. Our endoscopy should be considered as a high risk procedure. Lower endoscopy should be considered as a low risk procedure. But all, most of them are risk. So for the higher low risk, I said what we do, for the higher risk, you should have uh, 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 FFB2 or FFB3 or N95, hernet, goggle or face shield, long sleeve, and minimum of pair of two gloves. So this is very important. I will show you immediately. I'm saying this is very important. This is a low risk here. Hernet, single use gown, glove over the cover rest, surgical mask, and the goggle. This is the low risk. The high risk, it is hernet, Google, face shield, long sleeve water resistance gown, N95 or FFB two or three, the spiral, and two pair of gloves, two pair of gloves. So this is a low risk and high risk. I will show you immediately. How to put that, and this is very important. This is a paper from, uh, coming from Italy, from uh, Milan. So the first step is you put the hairnet, and then your second step, making a hand hygiene. Then the third step, put your gown. Then you put your mask. If you don't have, you can book uh, this mask, the normal mask. Fifth step, you should have a You should have two gloves. This is very important. You put one inner and one outer. Burn on your hand until the, before the rest. And then you put the another one over it uh, to that period. But I will show you uh, very quickly like that. This is the first step, second step, third step. Please take this very carefully. Because many reports now coming that the endoscopy uh, it's one of the major uh, part to transmit uh, infections. So uh, uh, the first, uh, the fourth step is to put your uh, uh, fitting, but fitting test should be done after putting the face and the open, and after that you put uh, the two gloves uh, uh, for you. So this is this is me. When I do endoscopy with a Google, with a net, with N95, and with the waterproof uh, uh, gown, and this is a, a nurse with two gloves uh, here, with the same idea, and the face. Uh, and I will show you. I will show you the face. This is this is the face. It is it is uh, it is very 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 cheap. Now it make it in Egypt in a very cheap way, and this is by this one. You see it very very good. So it is maybe instead of using a goggle, so it can prevent everything. So if you use that with a surgical mask, it can be. And now it's made locally here in our country, and many doctors uh, 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 use it. You said that it's easy to uh, to put, but the, the most dangerous one when you remove it. So before you remove it. First step, you make a hygiene for your gloves. And then you remove the two gloves, then you make another hygiene, then you, you wear another new one after you make a hygiene, and then you remove your gown, then you remove your goggle, you remove your mask, and then you remove your hairnet. And after that, you make the nine steps, is remove the gloves, which you wear it here, and then you make the new one. It is the hand hygiene. So this is, this is uh, uh, very important uh, for that. So these are steps, I put it slowly because it is very important. Because the problem is coming here, not in coming during, when you, when you put it, you are very afraid. When you remove it, you finish everything. So you can remove it, you can by your hand infect it your face or any problem. Or you, 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 you take your, your um, uh, this is a mask, you put the mask like that, 
And when you remove the mask, you should remove it from here. But somebody removed the mask from here. You remove the mask like that. So your hand become infected. So it is very important to take care of this very simple point, which lead to many people doing endoscopy infected. So this is how to remove it. Another very tricky, uh, uh, simple trick, that during removal of the uh, taking biopsy, make continuous suction, because during removal of the biopsy forceps, you can get some uh, solar generating coming from the suction to your face. So make continuous suctions when you're moving your forceps during biopsy. Uh, it's another thing which is not related to my lecture. Listen, try to listen to music, to deal with your children, tell a story, and speak about your future. Liver injury, it can, it can be due to hypoxia. Most of the related uh, liver injury are mild. It only close uh, 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 watch without intervention. But mortality of liver transplant recipient higher than the normal populations. Incidence of liver injuries about 40%, liver enzyme increased by 40%, the same in lactate dehydrogenase. Rare case of severe acute hepatitis can be described, but low serum album in the hospital admission is one marker of COVID-19 and severity. Take care that antiviral drug to treat the virus. Sorry. Is is toxic. So take care of that. Therapeutic agent used to manage symptomatic COVID-19, like the new drug remdesivir, are also uh, toxic. Less common chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine and erythromycin. How to stable your unit for uh, liver disease? Limit our patient visits to only patient who must see in person as a patient with urgent issue and the clinically significant liver disease. Follow the recommended for personal protection equipment. If personal protection is not available, keep a distance of at least six feet from the patient document uh, and decontent. The, uh, the waiting area should be, should be clean. Strongly consider form visit or telemedicines. This is also an important subject. Many questions are coming what the patient was B and C virus do. It's unknown that patients with chronic liver disease, especially in B virus, may be suspected to liver damage by uh, uh, COVID-19, but it happened before with SARS-CoV-2B. Uh, COVID-19 infection is exacerbated in cholestasis in those underlying cholestatic liver disease, primary barrier sclerosis, or uh, uh, barrier cirrhosis with or without cirrhosis. It can increase cholestasis. It may be increased risk in patients with alpha-1 trypsin efficiency with lung disease. Also, patients with nothing may be at higher risk of severe COVID-19 infections. What recommendation of treatment uh, of your disease? You should continue treatment for hepatitis B and C, and you should proceed with the new cases treatment without virus infections. Initiation of treatment of hepatitis B in patients with COVID-19 is not routinely recommended, but should be considered if you are using immunosuppressive therapy for these patients. Initiation treatment of virus C in patients with COVID-19 is not routinely wanted. So B and C should be you continue your treatment as the same if they have no virus. If they have virus and B virus, don't you don't make treatment. But if they receive immunosuppression, you should give him the paint of B virus, C virus give nothing. Continue monitoring of this and need therapy for hepatocellular carcinoma. Delay of two months is, is reasonable for therapy answer of these patients. Consider virtual visit to discuss diagnosis and management, but proceed to a better serial carcinoma treatment when able, rather than to delay due to pan endemic, especially treatment. 
patient with the compensated liver cirrhosis transplant and patient in liver transplant waiting area. This is very important. You know, patients was using in transplant or he, he use prograf or he use Celcept or he use neural to give the, give the patients refilling them by 90 days uh, uh, instead of uh, instead of 30 days uh, treatment. So give him a, a drugs for two months. Advise patient not to travel during these pandemics. Low threshold of admitted patient on transplant waiting list. The patient on transplant decrease in admission of them. Consider using a specific screening facility. COVID-19 free password. What's mean by that? Make a special password in the hospital for this patient for transplant candidate. You should contact patient education, social, finance, by video conference, by telemedicine, telephone, whenever possible. Avoid multiple patients in one room for patient education. How to manage patients with immunosuppressions? In immunosuppression, liver disease patient without the virus don't make any things. In immunocompromised patient which get the virus, consider minimize the dose or high dose of midazolam, but avoid to decrease the dose to avoid adrenal insufficiency, but decrease the dose. Consider using azocyprine or microfilate or stop them, which will see the setting of lymphopenia and fever attributed to or pneumonia to the virus. Consider reducing, but not stopping, daily calcium as a burgraph or neural, especially in setting of lymphopenia or fever or pulmonary condition attributed to the virus. So this is how to deal with the, with the immunosuppression and patient with liver transplant. Initiate immunosuppression therapy in patient with liver disease with or without infections with COVID-19. We have a strong indication like autoimmune hepatitis and the graft rejection. You should use it. And you should take monitors of drug-drug interactions. Please, please stay safe in your country. In your country, either any place, but also stay positive. We should, I don't know the situation in all African country. Our situation, you know that for the world meters of infections, especially very bad in Europe, it's very bad in the United States. So it is not so bad in Egypt. I don't know other places. It is very little as I look, but you don't know the wave because in Latin America, it was very low since about one month in March. Now it is markedly increased in Brazil. So we don't know where the wave is coming in the near futures. So please stay safe and please stay soft. Stay positive in Africa. This is a nice slide. I like to, to uh, all of you to uh, look for this slide. Is the last slide. What I cannot control, all of you, what we cannot control, how long this pandemic will last? Who will get ill and who not? The flight will turn to normal or not? Other people's choice, uh, stock market reactions, other people's reaction. If, if and the when they will be fine, a vaccine, nobody knows. Any physical distance and social isolation, who will do that? I cannot control all this blue area, but still you have an area for you, which I can control your attitude, how I contact with other people, my exposure to negativity, what I am grateful for, my routine, how to make care of myself, how to spend my time, what I, what I do for fun, my reaction. So you can control all of that. You can control all of that. It's not little. You can control many things. So please stay positive. Make your future. I make your future. I make my future. I still working for it. Maybe it don't happen again in this year, but I still working on that. Hoping that everything will finish by summer and we can gather all of us in, in Cairo. Maybe we come to you very early at the end, uh, in the October or something, to any country in Europe. Already you plan to come to three countries in Africa 
we have already agreement that uh, to come as four doctors to three countries in Africa in this year, and we get the agreement on beginning of February, and about that time, this uh, pandemic happened. But already we have an agreement to stay for one week, four doctors in three African countries in this year and in the second year, above that we bring two groups to Cairo. So we still have many things to do, which is other. But I think that time, because I lost all of you to be with me, so I tried to contact you. Maybe the number as I see now, uh, 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 now I will stop, I will stop sharing the screen. Uh, the number with me is uh, 55. I think Nancy did a very hard work to send hundreds of emails. But okay, 55 is okay. I hope next time it will be more. And I hope next time to be contact with other. Maybe you, you send an email to me or to Nancy. What you need to be said, a lectures or discussions with every country alone, like the discussion with Kenya, Ethiopia. So we make a meeting with Kenya, Professor Ugutu or Professor uh, uh, anyone in, uh, in uh, Tanzania, anyone in, uh, anyone in uh, Kenya, anyone in Ethiopia, anyone in Sudan. So we can, we can make a group by groups to discuss our, uh, uh, our problems in COVID-19, to discuss any subject. So try to send us what we need. 52 is good, uh, uh, but you, you can imagine that we have applied 100, I think 20, that may send to me, uh, already registers. To get 55 is not bad. We have, I think, uh, three questions. And Nancy be with you now to uh, send me what is the questions. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Mustafa. Uh, actually, as you said, um, it is not only uh, a scientific lecture. It's uh, something to uh, communicate, uh, first of all. And the second thing is to convey some messages uh, for us uh, to stay positive, to think for uh, the try to find the silver lining or the opportunity behind every difficult situation and to start to try uh, not to lose hope and to continue to plan uh, despite the limitations. Uh, okay, so we have a first question. Uh, are you practicing uh, colonoscopy at your center at this time? This is uh, from our friend from Ethiopia, Vikadu. Uh, no, we, we, we don't do a routine colonoscopy as follow up, only do an emergency one. It's a low risk of procedure, but no routine follow up for polyp, no routine for up, but if you have a bleeding rectum, if you have something like flaring of IBD, like I said in my lecture, if you turn to my lecture, there are some things should be discussed with and something you don't know. No routine colonoscopy, like screening now. You can postpone screening uh, and uh, for uh, two or three weeks, one month, no problem at all. The second question about routine EGD, uh, which I, I think is more or less of the, the same answer. Routine, routine upper endoscopy cannot yes. be done. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Fikadu again, uh, thanking you, Professor. Uh, do you use non, non selective beta blockers for severely ill COVID 19 with portal hypertension on beta blockers? I don't know what is the problem of giving a beta blocker and COVID-19 is afraid for lung, but I think it's also non-essential drugs. If you have any problem in the virus, you can stop it because it's not important drugs. Okay. Uh, from Libya, uh, our friend, uh, Dr. Abdullah, uh, is uh, saying even the situation could be underestimated, but no cases reported in Libya. Uh, that even much less than a seasonal flu. For how long we will keep on such precautions? The question uh, is, for yes. how long? Yeah. This, is, this is a very good question, Dr. Abdallah, for that. Uh, 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 believe me, nobody knows all over the world when we finish, when we go up, when I go to Libya. You can come to us. Nobody knows, but uh, 
nobody knows when this uh, era of uh, of COVID-19 finish, but we should, as I said, it's a very dynamic disease. Every, every, every day you have a change. Every day you have a newspaper about the new drugs, a new vaccine. So until now, there is no 3,000 or more of paper published in this virus, but not, nothing it is evidence-based until now. So we should follow now the, the structure, which I get it from all the paper, more than maybe 100 paper, it follows the structure until something happens again. Okay. Uh, another question from Dr. Joseph. Uh, is there any special endoscopy reprocessing technique in the COVID era that should be different from before? Regarding the disinfection. No, 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 I, this is, I think. no, no very good. Very good question. As I said in my lectures also, disinfections, disinfection, it is the same. The okay. same. It's the same, okay. So, uh, Professor uh, Eli Ogutu is with, uh, with us, uh, uh, and he's asking about a bleeder. If you have a bleeder and you have an infection facility, what you do? Uh, Eli, uh, I miss you uh, because you are one of the very early uh, doctors who come to us in 2004 and become the king of Kenya now. And... Uh, I hope to come to Kenya again, uh, to your country, I hope to come again. But uh, believe me, if you don't have an eye protection, don't make it. It is very easy. The, it's very cheap to click the Google. If you don't have the Google, uh, I think my pictures, I will come to see my pictures here. You see, uh, this, is, this is a very nice one. It is very cheap in Egypt now. It is three. It is three, some, uh, 300, uh, no, no, it's 30 Egyptian pound, 30 Egyptian pound, which is uh, how, how much by dollars, Nancy? Uh, 30 Egyptian pounds, uh, I think the, the, it's 15 now, so it's two, two dollars, yeah. So by two dollars, you can get this one, which is, which is uh, you can protect your eye if you don't have a special book. So, if if if, we, if we, anyone need it, please send me. We we'll try to send you about that. But this is never do that. Okay. 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 So the next question from Doctor uh, Akandi: uh, Do we now insist on testing before carrying out endoscopy in those suspected with the symptoms of COVID? Yes, you should. If you have suspected, you should you should suspect it because now. By, by the rapid test, by the rapid test, uh, uh, you can you can do that if you suspected that. But if you have no facility, deal with him, deal with him because I think Mustafa, he said to me he did one cases of uh, severe, I think bleeding or uh, severe cholangitis, and that because the test is coming by 24 hours, the the, the test for the virus, so he, he uh, did that. Uh, without waiting, without waiting, but it was fully protected. So it should be fully protected, like dealing with patients. If you don't have uh, uh, a rabbit, one of these. So we can, we can, uh, Professor Mustafa, we, can we depend on the classification of the uh, risk of the patient, the low risk, high risk, or um, moderate risk, uh, according yes. to what yes. you have said, if we don't yes. have the test? You don't have this high risk. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, Dr. Abudun from uh, Nigeria, he is saying, thank you, uh, Professor. Is it possible for us to have the lecture slides? Yes, it will be on the on your YouTube. It will be on the YouTube immediately. Okay, great. There is one okay, question, so, Nancy. Yes. Uh, do, you continue, do you continue routine per se and band ligation on the schedules? Yes. Yes, no. No, you can wait. You can wait one or two weeks because if the patient, you know, is very good, you don't need to make a, a routine, a routine of that. I think you missed these questions. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so, uh, um, sorry, the next slide. Uh, Dr. 
Dr. Masolua is ask, uh, say th many thanks for the lecture. Is it uh, sorry also for the slides? He's asking also for the slides. So we will put the YouTube as we, as we said. Yes. yes. Uh, and then there's another question: Can we? Uh, where can we get those Googles? Yes, as as I said, and the Google, Google it is. Yeah. It's present in Egypt, but as, as I send it to, because any good to the second version, we have it, which is very good. If you don't have a Google, you can use also this uh, um, this mask, this cheese. But Google, it's very easy to get it. You know the Google, which people, which the doctor, which the use it during a swimming, uh, that you put the Google on your in your uh, eyes when you're swimming. It is same like this one. If you don't have, you can use one of these one. Yes, yes. Some people use it. The, the Google, which is used during the swimming to prevent water to come, so you can use it. But you also, can invent something. Yes, yes. But it is not difficult. It's not difficult to get it. Maybe the difficult thing is the mask 90, uh, 91, which is the most difficult one to get it. But the uh, cheese is very good. Okay. So uh, we have a question from uh, Dr. Steve. Considering that there is a component of fecal oral transmission of COVID, what additional disinfection protocols should we add during this infection, especially in emergency endoscopy or colonoscopy? Again, about the disinfection. If there is an element of fecal oral transmission. This infection for anosmotic endoscopy it is the same like pre covidian area because it destroys all the virus. And this is a very weak virus, can be destroyed immediately. This virus is a weak, the, this virus cannot live for more, long times because it's able to survive on a human cells. So it needs a human cell to survive it. So by this infection, you can finish it. Okay. So I also uh, another question uh, from our friend, Dr. Samson, also about the disinfection. So I think uh, we just answered this question. Yes. Uh, and then uh, our friend, uh, Dr. Akwi, is thanking uh, you for the webinar. Um, and uh, Dr. Mary, thank you for being with us, Dr. Mary. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Uh, and she is asking about screening patients for COVID. Should we do PCR or the antibody test kit? This is, this is a question, but it's a very good one. They speak about the, the tests for antibody is more symptoms than the PCR. PCR antibody will prove IgM and IgG. PCR the virus, but they said the test of uh, rapid test, the test maybe the new one was sensitive more than 90%. PCR, it takes two, uh, 24 hours. Rapid test, it takes hours only. And they said that more, uh, more sensitive. But believe Mary, it's a very, very rapidly progress. I try every day to read paper about that especially about endoscopy. I don't look for mortality, fatality, how many patients died in the United States or Italy. It is, it's a panic. I will, I will not in a, in a games, as I said, turn in a games, who is this one, this two, like in, in a tennis game or something like that. But I look for the medical part. It's a rapidly progressing about vaccine, about the test. But what I need, what I understand now that the, the, the rapid test is more specific uh, uh, okay, so um, uh, Dr. Shikama is, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, also about the disinfection. Uh, what is the disinfectant solution after scoping of a highly COVID suspected positive? The same like one. The same like the same. one. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Jivanshi, uh, very informative lecture professor. Are there any changes to the endoscopy suite you would recommend with regard to air filters? Uh, no. There is some, some paper speaking about using endoscopy in negative pressure rooms. And negative pressure room is not present in every, in every hospital because negative pressure room is very effective. So sometimes I do a cases in a negative pressure rooms. But what we need is to decrease the number of the people present in the rooms and to follow the instruction, which I said in my lectures. But air filter or something is nothing. Only the negative pressure room, if you have, but it's very rare. Only you have one or two rooms in any hospital. And sometimes hospitals, they don't have a tool. 
Okay. Uh, another question about the slides. We uh, we um, we will have the uh, them on the YouTube. And uh, then Dr. Sony, uh, our friend, uh, thanks a lot, Professor. My question is uh, about the manual cleaning of the scope. Does we still consider same protocols in this pandemic about the manual cleaning, not machine uh, cleaning? This is this is a difficult question because now manual cleaning is not recommended at all. Uh, but uh, uh, it's a very difficult question because not all the hospital has the automatic one and some music manual, manual cleaning, but I think you should be very cautious, very, very cautious in manual, in manual cleaning and you should uh, put the, about the endoscope, you should put it in the, in the same material or the height or something like that, you put it in the same time, like automatic, but the problem of the doctors of the nurse working with the instrument because she told to make many things. So the manual one is maybe very dangerous and should take care of that. But it's a problem. It's still present in many countries, maybe, maybe in many areas, also in Egypt. But believe me, uh, for these questions, I will ask my, because I will look for that again. And maybe I answer you by, uh, by email about this very important lecture. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Aqui about the time between cases. If you don't have a negative pressure room, do you allow longer time in between the cases? Does this can make any good? Yes, yes it, you should schedule, you should clean the rooms uh, by uh, chlor, uh, and you should schedule the very little cases and you should clean the case the the time, not, not like before. When you finish to clean the scope, clean the room, clean everything, waiting, and you only do that. Okay, the next question is about the urea breath test. Uh, is it advisable to carry out the urea breath test as an alternative to EGD during the pandemic? And can the urea breath test be considered an aerosol generating procedure? Yes, very good questions. Don't make anything of that. What is important to do urea test test now? It's, it's more important because if you have, a, if you have an helicobacter, you have helicobacter since many years. So it's not so important to do that. Again, it's not, uh, it's not an urgent, it's not an urgent, it's not an urgent now because during that, it, you can get some, also, it's absorbed because you get air from your mouth. So I don't recommend using that now. But this is another question which I should look for it on the internet about urea breast test and about uh, cleaning, uh, manual cleaning. Uh, and remember me, Nancy, about that also. Okay. But I see no need for that. It's, it's, it's not a routine. Well, no upper endoscopy, no, no routine test. Okay, our, our colleagues are thanking you, Professor, Dr. Vincent, Dr. Mtiaz, and Dr. Sonai. And there's a question from Dr. Mtiaz, which, which is a very good question. Should endoscopy nurses wear full PPE? This is a very, very, very human being question. The nurse is more important than the physicians. The nurse, the number of nurse dying in the United States is more than the number of the, of the physicians. So the nurse is more important because you do endoscopy in two, three, four, five minutes. The nurse is staying with the patients for about half an hour. So you should protect the nurse more important. So I said in my lecture, it should be given because all the nurses in your country, they are speaking English. So I hope in the second time, uh, uh, many of your nurses, maybe I take it uh, town by town uh, or uh, country by country, that I make our PNR, everyone make the Professor Ugoto, Professor Abmenem, or Professor uh, Samsung, or anyone, we choose anyone. They gather people in one rooms, and he pay a dinner for them by his money. I think some of them are, can do that. And then the nurses is very important to speak about maybe some video film about that. But nurses is very important. It's a very nice question because I think nurse is more touched with the patients. We have a question about uh, the future COVID testing do you think it can be a prerequisite before endoscopy? Again, you consider, huh? 
do you think that uh, uh, no, maybe, maybe, testing is maybe what I happen in some hospital in Egypt now they, they prevent any admission except the patient make a rapid test and CT chest if the CT chest and rapid test are negative they be admitted so but it is according to the facility because you should pay for that but now the number of screening tests it is not too much like in the States or like in some country, like in Italy or Europe. But maybe in, in, in um, some of you visit the Wadi Nil Hospital, they do rapid test, CT test before any admission. So if any problem, they don't admit, they send it, uh, they have a problem, they send it to the isolation hospital. Uh, we have a question about the disinfection of the endoscopy room between the patients if you suspect that the uh, that the, some patients are uh, may, may be asymptomatic but ha are having COVID uh, positive. And uh, yes, I think is. we answered this question before, before about the disinfection. And in my lecture also, I think that uh, disinfection of the room, it's very important uh, every, in every one of patients. I do the same in my clinics. Yes. And again, about going back to normal. To normal life, normal endoscopy. What do you think? Yes. I hope, I hope, in my opinion, by the end of the summer, we turn normal and we can meet in Cairo or in Ethiopia or in Uganda or in Tanzania or Zambia or in Sudan. I hope me and four doctors and Nancy ready to come and ready to go. I hope that. But what, what, what we shall do that? I cannot lose 300 doctors of my friend in Africa without digging, uh, speaking with them. So maybe may by, I will ask my what is the maximum number in Zoom so we can meeting like a face-to-face -face gathering with each other so we can make from here a Zoom on some subject uh, uh, in Kenya maybe on Saturday and then Sunday for half an hour discussing about any subject when you send an email what you need. We have many thanks for, from our friends and we thank them for being here with us. And we have another question from uh, Dr. Joseph from Sierra Leone. Uh, he is asking about uh, the sedation uh, in the COVID era in upper endoscopy. Do you recommend local spray or propofol? Propofol. Propofol. Okay, so the regular. So uh, we have a, uh, another, our last question, I think, so far. Uh, how long it takes to do an upper endoscopy for a person who has been treated in the past? Um, it's What's not very that? clear, the question. What's mean by that? Routine and uh, question. Like, if you have a bullet esophagus and you make routine every one year, most bullet now. If you have a routine for gastritis, most bullet. So routine full up is most bullet. So don't he make means, it. Uh, he, yes, he added a, he added a clarification. He, he uh, said a person who has been treated for COVID. Uh, uh, so the person who has been treated for COVID and then he needs an upper endoscopy. And do you need some time or how time uh, does it take for you to uh, do an upper endoscopy? Speaking, they said one, they said, uh, 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 one month, uh, 28 days, but they said that until you make a rapid test with IgG, positive only, without IgM and the without virus. To do it. But I think there is no uh, uh, emergency to do follow-up. But if there is an emergency, deal with him as that. But they said two weeks, but now they said 28 days. And they said that there is many patients said it may be more than that. No clinical idea, but should make an IgG rapid test and PCR and also uh, make a, a, a personal protection equipment. Okay. Um, we have a question about post COVID. Do you recommend testing? as a routine for patients coming for endoscopy? Post? Post-COVID, I, th I think he means after a patient has recovered. Do we recommend testing? I don't know testing, he means uh, I Dr. Know, I Akandi. Said, I said it is a very dynamic. Yeah. I said it's a very dynamics. I don't know answers, but I think we still to get an evidence-based medicine about what we do with the COVID. So in my lecture, I think it's a very dynamic, very changeable rapidly change guidelines. It's not a guideline, it's a guidance. There is nothing called the guideline now in COVID-19, nothing, 0%. It's called guidance. 
what I said to you is guide this. How to guide you, but some information I spent about two or three weeks to make it. So it's a guide list. So I, I, I make some uh, work to give you some idea about what I did. But in the same times, in the, in the same times, maybe change, you have a guideline that we should make what, and should make what, and should make what. Until now, we are an area used should be highly protected. Uh, I think this is all what we get for, uh, for questions. Nothing? No more questions? Okay, so uh, uh, they had one again. To... Uh, last one, one last question just arrived. Okay, uh, so I think this, this, well, this will be the last one. How do you prevent uh, aerosol uh, spread during upper GI in conscious sedation? How do you prevent a uh, sim? The, the, the same things I said, the same things that I, you should have totally uh, have a patient protective equipment. When you go to the endoscopy, you should be protected. Uh, there's a request from uh, our uh, friend, Dr. Onikia. Please help us open channels for interactions with you. Yes, this is the most important question. And we finish by that. So I will speak with you friendly now. This is what the idea. We are 50, 55, with me and Nancy become 57, and with my, which is black, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, 58. And I think some people may be with us. What I need, it is this one, the first one is to get connected. I try to be get connected. So we connected with 55. I will know for my to ask my what's the maximum numbers we can work in by Zoom to be face-to-face -face interaction. So we have a small lectures. I have a small lectures or a video. Now we have a webinar. If you're looking for Roya webinar, yesterday we have uh, uh, Ready, which gave a nice lecture from India on webinar and Roya webinar. I think today we have a lecture also intelligent endoscopy. Jacques Devier will have a lectures on, um, I think, 8th of May, and all these lectures, you just register, and you'll get this lecture. So we try to get uh, two things. We get the best of uh, gastro hip in the last uh, two years. We, we broadcasted that. At the same time, we have a webinar from eminent doctors from Royal Center to spread to you. I have one lecture about uh, bleeding viruses. And then ready have a lectures. I think uh, Edward will have a lectures also. Uh, Jean Marc Giovannini have a lectures. Uh, jo uh, Marc Partey have a lecture. But still, we will continue to make a lectures, like educational lectures. And we still to make also some uh, cases live during the best uh, Egypt gastro. So I will discuss with with all of you especially the, the eminent one, not the eminent one, the old one, which is no me since 15 years, how to interact with each other. So I will ask him, what is the maximum? If you said eight or nine or 10, so all of us will, 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 will be with webinar, maybe a little time, maybe 20 minutes, we'll present a case or present a lecture and we discuss and make it country by country. So we, we make it, now we are, after nine o'clock, we are free. I don't know, I asked Nancy to make it at nine, so nine, it will be 10, and your country may be very late. So now we have connected. So we'll send an email again, what's the best time? We can make it every three days, a simple case or simple songs by interaction. This is uh, my idea. So this is what I ask, please put the channel interacting with you. This is what, this is what I can, do for that. So uh, uh, I waited for your reply by emails, especially uh, all the all people was us. I need from any uh, Ugutu and from all the people uh, with us from all the country, especially the, the doctor which has become come many times because I tried to research about doctor coming in 2004. We have when we send that email, we have a delivery failure of about. 15 doctor or 20 doctor, so the email are changed. 
So because you can, ch I change my email since 10 years. So 2004, many people change their email. So I ask you, uh, why I ask you to send to your colleagues that maybe one of them, which is with us since 10 years, that he changes his email, but he get from your email when you spread to your country, he can come to return it to us. I try to be connected with all the people coming to Cairo Training Center to make a dealing with them. So first things, I try to make it, how to make how many people, maybe we have a Zoom, which all the people present, a Zoom in the rooms. So I can see the room with 30 people and you can see the people asking which is other, so I can look for everyone. We can give a small lecture. We can give one cases video, which is done uh, uh, last week's or nice cases, and we discuss on that. But at first, we we'll to look for a webinar for Roya because it's every week you have a very nice lecture. The next one will be Jacques de Pierre, ready is finished. But every lecture, it will be on the Facebook, on the YouTube of Roya or Egypt Gastroib. If you go to Roya uh, on the face uh, on the face time or in the YouTube or Egypt Gastrib, you will find all the lecture of Ready and all the people. Some pictures has now more than five thousand uh, people view that. This is my idea in education to all African people in that time. So I hope that everyone is okay. I hope everything is okay. I need your request. I need your how to help each other in the next few months until we meet person to person. But the idea of to make connected, I think it can come from mine that you have a very special uh, Zoom in your country. And this is Zoom, put the camera to the 30 people or 40 people uh, with a dinner or something like that. And then we can discuss my lectures and then we discuss with each other about that. And this is making the world of facility to see the people. I only see, Nancy is very beautiful also. But I like I like to see other people. Yeah, yes. I like to see yes. all the people from Kenya, from Sudan, from Ethiopia, from Sudan, Tanzania, from Zambia, from Nigeria, from Chad. So I like to see the people face to face, like to see me. So this is a nice idea. I would like to handle that and I will send an email very soon to all of you. Second send, please, all the people coming to Cairo training centers. I miss many of them their email. Please try to help me to get this email, the new one. Especially the people coming in 2004, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. We have all the email very good from 2009. From two, before 2009, we have missed some email, which when you send it, it come to us by deliver ferry. Thank you very much. I am very happy that you see me. I think happy to, uh, to see us. I'm very glad to see you. Next time we will see each other, maybe take it country by country. Maybe every see day you have a meeting according to your schedule. Nancy will work on that. It's a huge work, but Nancy now, it is, you can, you can do that, Nancy? Yes, sure, of course. I would love to. Okay, okay. and May, thank May, you. You, can thank open, you May, May, you can open your, uh, your uh, sound now, May. May you open your sound, May? Yes. Yes, Professor, I'm here. Hello. May, you can, you can help us on that uh, request? Yes, sure. I'll see how to do it, and I'll get back to you on that. OK. So thank you very thank much. You, thank you very much. And all the questions coming to me, if uh, we miss some of them, we will try to uh, uh, make it uh, by video. So thank you, all of you, and see you maybe very, very quickly. Thank you. Yeah. Stay safe and we will see you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.